we are heading to North City. We are going to set up some traps along an alleyway probably to look for squirrels and to try to capture the squirrels. And once we get these animals, we'll take a little DNA sample, we'll take some fur samples, and then we can use that to ask questions about how these squirrels might be evolving in urban areas. Urban evolution is the study of animals and how they interact with their environment and how they're evolving and adapting within the urban landscapes how evolution in cities might be different from evolution in more rural or forested areas. And it's kind of shocking that we've been living alongside these animals for so long, and there's very basic questions about their biology that we don't have answered yet. And then taste them in with some walnuts. So humans modify the landscape in massive ways. We put buildings up, we put roads in, we put streams and rivers underground. We add things to it, like our food, that we then throw away in dumpsters. And that provides this 24-hour buffet for these animals that are living in the urban environment. Is that a squirrel on the dumpster? <laughs> We just came across a dumpster where a squirrel was sitting on top of the dumpster eating. And so we'll set up traps right around that dumpster and right next to that kind of telephone pole. See if we can catch it or its friends. Squirrels are one of these animals that are really in cities kind of all over the United States and therefore make this great organism to see how our patterns might be similar or different. You can kind of tell the wealth of a neighborhood just by driving through based on if there's a bunch of tree cover versus lack of tree cover, how the parks are maintained. There's been more dumping that occurs in predominantly black and minority neighborhoods. And this is all wrapped up in environmental racism and this idea that historically people of color have been excluded from the environmental movement and have been excluded from making decisions and being involved in policy making. We've just set out about a dozen traps. We'll check them in a few hours for a couple squirrels and get DNA from those squirrels if we catch any. If we catch any, that's always kind of the thing. It's, it's, you could set out traps all day and not catch anything. And that's just what wildlife research is like. <laughs> it's fine. We've been gone from the traps for about four or five hours. Hopefully at least one squirrel we caught in this alleyway. We'll see. So in this trap we have, it looks like we've caught a squirrel. Who wants to hold and who wants to take notes? So this white bag is a squirrel cone and it is what we're going to use to handle the squirrel. And Camille's gonna hold the other end and make sure that there's light so that the squirrel wants to run towards something. And then Camille grabs it and holds. Get some fur from the tail. Whoop. Okay, you can let go. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going to find here. And that's kind of what makes it so exciting. Once we have the DNA sequence from each one of these squirrels, we can reconstruct how each squirrel is related to each other. Kind of like a 23andMe on squirrels. We can then overlay the environmental factors, things like canopy cover that are related to environmental racism. And we can start to understand how these factors might be influencing where the squirrels are and how those squirrels are moving through the environment and how they're dispersing across the environment.